Grace, mercy and peace be with you. Thank you for the response. And for those of you forgotten, when I say grace, mercy and peace be with you, you reply and also with you. It's lovely to see you. I haven't seen you for such a long time, uh, but I hope you enjoy these little uh, videos of uh, assembly. Now, just one thing I wanted to share with you that while we've been away, uh, my uh, children were one morning uh, learning about uh, one of the Bible stories. They were asked to draw a picture of a priest and uh, they came up with this. Isn't that wonderful? Does it, does it resemble anyone? I'm not sure, but um, there it is anyway. So we're going to put three things out, if you remember, at the beginning of assembly to remind us. And uh, we're going to start with um, the cross, the cross of Jesus. Uh, very important for Christians. And you might remember also that it's uh, an X if you turn it around for crossing out. God crossing out all the things that we've done wrong when we accept his forgiveness. Uh, the second thing we're going to put on the table is the Bible, which is a book of God's stories, God's history between God and his people. Uh, and it's also God's letter to each of us, to you and to me, telling us uh, about how much he loves us. So that's God's letter here. I'm going to leave in front of us. And, uh, and last but no means least, of course, the third thing is a candle. And... We light the candle. I've got an extra large lighter so I don't have to burn my fingers anymore. We're going to light this candle to remind us that Jesus, for Christians, is the light of the world. And in fact, he's a light of the world for everyone, Christians and others. So that burns there to remind us about the day. Now, um, I want to talk today about time and waiting. Now, I wonder if you've got one of these on your phone. That's right, it's an alarm clock. I think everyone's got an alarm clock to help us time things because we're very often waiting uh, for something to happen. Now, if you're waiting and you're doing something exciting, like you're playing a game or, 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 or watching a great television programme, time passes really quickly, doesn't it? Uh, if you're doing something less interesting, like things we all have to do, like the, the washing up or the hoovering uh, or having to uh, iron the curtains, and I expect you all iron the curtains, um, then, uh, then it does seem to t feel such a long time. Now, I'm going to try an experiment because what I'd like to do is to see if you can guess how long a minute is going to be. So I'm going to find my uh, stopwatch and I'm going to time a minute. Now, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you all, when I say, to put your hands in the air. Don't, they don't speak or say anything. Just put your hands in the air. When you think a minute has passed, take them down and I'll tell you. When it's, uh, when it's come to it. So you have a guess and see. Oh, we'll see who was the nearest. Ready with your hands? Hands up. Beginning. Keep your hands up. Let's see how long. And take your hand down when you think we've passed a minute. Feels like such a long time, doesn't it? Any hands coming down? Any hands coming down? Keep your hands in the air as long as you think it's not a minute and then we'll see who was the nearest. Are your arms getting tired now? OK, well, the minute passed about five seconds ago. So uh, if your hands were still in the air just a few seconds ago, give yourself a, 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 a silent word of, of praise because that was excellent. You had the minute. Now, the question today is about fruit. And I wonder whether any of you have any fruit trees in your garden. Do any of you have any uh, apple trees or uh, any vines or, or pear trees? Just put your hand up quietly if you do. Some of you have fruit trees, that's wonderful. They're amazing, aren't they? 
But the interesting thing is, is that blossom comes out in the spring and then that blossom turns into the fruit. And then the blossom comes out so that the insects can actually pollinate uh, the, the flowers and let them in the warm summer months so they grow fruit. But here's a question. How do trees know it's spring? How do they know it's springtime? And some of you might like to have a guess. Some of you will probably like to guess that it might be the temperature or uh, maybe there's just more sun. Well, let's have an imagination. Just imagine it's as if there was a clock inside each plant. Here's a clock here. Have I got the right way up? Yes, I have. Here's a clock. A clock a little bit like that so that plants knew what the time and the date was. And the way they do it is that they see how much daylight there is. And when there, there is the right amount of daylight and the right amount of darkness, they know that that is spring. And so they can begin to uh, put their blossom out. Isn't that clever? Don't you think that's clever? They have to balance the light and the day so they know how much time's come out. And then they put the pollen out, uh, put their uh, uh, blossom out. Uh, it's pollinated by the, the insects. And then in no time at all, you end up with lovely fruit. And in this case, I've got an apple. Now, this process of knowing about the light and the day and measuring the light has got a name. And I'm going to put it up for you. It's a very long name. Try not to set fire to it. It's photoperiodism. Can you all say that with me after three? One, two, three. Photoperiodism. Uh, well done for giving it a go. You haven't got to remember that, but that's interesting, isn't it? And that's inside every plant measuring the light and the darkness. Now, if the plants didn't have this special clock, they wouldn't know when to put out the, the blossom and the fruit. They put it out when the, when the uh, insects weren't around. They might put it out in the middle of winter so that it gets attacked by the frost. It's really important that it comes at the right time. If without it, the fruit wouldn't grow and there'd be no harvest. Now, Christians have got a view on that because in here we can read at the very beginning uh, in the book. Remember who what the first book is at the beginning of the Bible? Does anyone remember what the first book is? Um, someone say, if you, if you know what it is, someone say it confidently. The first book of the Bible. Well, some of you may have it. It's Genesis, the book of Genesis. And it's the story at the beginning of Genesis of God creating not just the world, but the whole universe. Stars, time and space as well. And here's what it says in Genesis. It says, then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it and it was so and we're told in, uh, in genesis that god says over and over again he saw that it was good that was creation was good but it's not just in genesis it talks about uh, god's creation and god looking after the seasons and the plants as well because they're so important aren't they without it there would be no life and so we read later on in a book called ecclesiastes which long one all about teaching but that says this for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted so the bible teaches that it was God who made all plants and trees. He decided the seasons and he made sure that the trees obeyed the rules. He even put the clock inside them. Not really a clock, we know it better as photoperiodism, but he put that, that little gadget inside, that little gizmo that helped them know when to blossom. Here's an apple here. I've decided to choose an apple I actually love apples. And what I'd love you to do is to have a piece of this apple. Unfortunately, you can't. Mmm, that's very nice. I expect you've all got your own favourite fruit. 
Um, have a think what your favourite fruit is. You might like bananas, oranges, limes, kiwi, lychees, pomegranates, pineapples, huge list, peaches, plums, grapes. You like all sorts of things. It's all very good for you. So we remember during harvest that God has actually made these things and he's done them, not just the whole by putting them on the tree anyway, but making the whole process, that clever thing about the blossom and the insects and the photoperiodism. He's made all of that. And that's what we're giving thanks for at harvest time. So I'm gonna say a short prayer now to say thank you to God for all the good things we have at harvest and for his care in making them. Now, when people you pray, you can do a couple of things. Some people like to put their hands together and that's fine. When I pray, I hold my hands out because I'm giving my prayer to God, but it's also open, ready to receive his answer. So can I do, invite you to do something with your hands? We'll close our eyes so that we're more aware, ready to listen to God speaking to us because in prayer, he speaks to us as well. And then I'm going to say the words of prayer. And at the end, please say Amen, if you'd like to make the prayer your own. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord God, for apple trees and for all fruit, for the clock inside them so that they know when it's time to make blossom, for the sun that makes the apples grow, for the juicy flavour of ripe apples at harvest time. Amen. Wish you all a very happy harvest and uh, I look forward to seeing you very soon at the next uh, assembly which we'll have on video. Grace, mercy and peace be with you.